Okay, so the first objective is to describe patterns of behavior related to your ability to remain in the present moment and respond to the environmental stimuli, both internal and external, as they, um, as they occur. As we learn to more effectively and efficiently describe our states of being, our present moment states, either what, what we do well or what we don't do well, it creates a larger awareness for us of what is going on with, you know, with us and within our environment on a moment to moment basis. And this greater awareness allows us to come in contact with and understand more those things that tend to cause us suffering. As we become greater, uh, as we become more aware, of those patterns and we're able to describe them in objective terms, it becomes easier over time to predict when those patterns might happen, take action before the fact to prevent, so antecedent strategies, and then also respond in the moment when we catch ourselves um, engaging or not engaging in behaviors that are in, in alignment with our desire to remain fully in the present moment. So there are two different exercises, uh, activities related to this objective. The first one is an experiential exercise um, called Be Where You Are, which is from the Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life book. The activity within the dashboard will ask you to reflect afterwards about this experience. And so some of you, many of you might have already had experiences with mindfulness meditation and guided meditations and things like that. Um, but this, you know, and experiential exercises are really important. So we get that practice to really feel what it feels like and, and hear what our thoughts are and really experience that um, the ability to become present and, and come into the present moment. And so what I would like all of you to do at this time is to get into a position, get into a place where you can, um, where you can just listen and be in a position where you are comfortable and ready to um, ready to simply follow along with the, um, with the guided meditation or guided mindfulness exercise, be where you are. So what I'll ask you to do is to get yourself into a seated position. You can be seated or laying down. The, my, the, I find it most comfortable to be seated. It is best if you are on sitting on the edge of your seat. So where you're, um, where you're, Transition from your butt to your legs is on the edge of your seat. And this allows you to both have your feet grounded on the floor, as well as improving your posture. So you can sit up more straight um, in a relaxed manner without slouching. So sitting on the edge of your seat with your um, uh, trunk, your core straight, your head in a relaxed position and your shoulders kind of back and down. And then resting your hands comfortably on your lap with your palms faced up. Close your eyes softly and begin to breathe slowly through your nose. As I read, I'll be, we'll be guiding you through the sensations that are in your body, shifting your awareness from different parts of your body and really feeling what it is that you're feeling, guiding your attention and guiding your brain to think about what you're feeling, what you're thinking about what you're feeling. Without judgment, just be willing to feel what you're feeling right now. There might be pain, we're not thinking about the pain, we're just letting it be what it is and just identifying it. If you find yourself being stuck in a thought, thank your mind for that thought and 
So get in your position, get comfortable, close your eyes, and simply listen. I want you to slowly bring your awareness to the tips of your fingers. So you feel them. Rub your fingertips together. How do they feel? Can you feel the small indentations on your fingertips? Is that are your fingerprints? Take the time and really try to feel them. What, is it, what are they like? Are your fingertips rough from lots of work? Or are they smooth and silky? How does it feel to rub them together? Notice the feelings and then move on. Now rest your fingers where they were before. What are they touching? Are they resting on a blanket on your bed? Are they resting on your arm of the chair? What does that feel like? Is it soft? Is it hard? Does it have any other distinguishing features? Are your pants or the blanket that you're touching, are they, is it fuzzy? Are there any markings that, markings or is it smooth? Take the time to completely absorb the way these objects feel to your fingertips. Now bring your attention to your hands and your arms. What do they feel? Perhaps they're relaxed and heavy. Perhaps they are still tense from a long day's work. Either way is okay. There is no need to judge. Simply observe the feelings in your arms and your hands. Are there any aches or pains? Take note of these but do not fix it on them. Simply note the pain and move on. Now move your attention down to your toes. Wiggle them around a little. Are they in shoes or socks? Are they free to move about? Squish your toes back and forth feeling whatever is beneath them. How does it feel? Can you tell what it is just by the feeling? Would you be able to tell only by touch? Just notice the sensations as you bring your awareness to your feet. How is your head positioned? If you are sitting, is your head aligned with your spine or is it drooping, resting on your chest? Without trying to change the position of your head, simply note where it is positioned. There is no right way for your head to be. Just let it be where it is. Now think about the sensations in your head. Do you have a headache? Is your head relaxed? What about your face? How does your face feel? There are all kinds of sensations to explore in your face. Think about your brow. Is it smooth and flat or is it crinkled up with stress? A 
Again, don't try to change it. Just notice it. Now bring your awareness to your nose. Can you breathe freely? Or are you plugged up? Take a few breaths in and out through your nose. How does that feel? Can you feel cool air blowing into your lungs? Or is the air warm? Pay attention to that feeling for a moment. Then think about your mouth. How is your mouth positioned? Is it pursed? Is it open? Is it closed? What about the inside of your mouth? Is it wet or dry? Can you feel your saliva for the inside of your mouth and throat? Explore all of the sensations throughout your face. Perhaps you can feel oil on your skin. Perhaps your skin is dry. Perhaps there is no feeling at all. Just note it and move on. Now bring your attention to your chest and belly. Place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. Can you feel yourself breathing? What is that like? Are you breathing fast or slow? Are your breaths going into your abdomen or into your chest? Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. What does that feel like? Now invert the pattern. Spend some time with your breath and place your hands where they were before. Now think of your whole body. Where are you sitting? or lying? Can you feel the back of your body touch the chair or bed in various places? Be mindful of the way your body is positioned. There is no need to move, just observe. Now think about the room you are in. Where are you positioned in the room? Do you have a sense of where the door is? What about the ceiling? Can you feel your body in the context of this larger space? When you are ready, open your eyes and take a look around the room. You can move in if you wish. Notice where the various pieces of furniture are. What do they look like? And spend as much as time as you like investigating the different aspects of the furniture. Remember not to judge, just to notice. Okay. When you're ready, take a deep breath in and let it out. And we'll come back to the present moment. And hopefully we're grounded in the present moment. I really, really like guided meditations because I've, I've personally had a problem with um, being able to guide myself through these mindfulness exercises. And so listening to somebody speak and guide me through a you know, guided body awareness or a body scan has been really something that has helped me become, you know, go, um, develop the skills to become more centered in the present moment. 
one of the um, one of the things that I have found to be very helpful as a tool that's available online is there is a YouTube channel um, called the Mindful Move Mindfulness Movement, and um, run by Sarah Raymond. And I've done there's a, she has a lot of you know, 15 to 20 minute guided meditations, and then some longer sleep guided meditations which I have found to be very, very useful when I am you know, beginning to develop these um, feelings of anxiety or stress or if I, you know, I feel like I can't sleep. Um, I found them to be very helpful. If you are willing or wanting to share anything out loud about your experience that, we, that you just had, or your experience with mindful meditation, um, I will open up the floor. Um, I'll tell you what I've been doing lately. Um, so I am nearly 38 weeks pregnant. So I've been doing a lot of hypnobirthing and the, you know, it's so act. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of their guided meditations and particularly because he's breech at the moment. So, um, doing a lot of their guided meditations around moving baby and things that have had some limited research on them. Um, and yesterday had to be admitted to hospital for a manual rotation and um, used a guided meditation actually while they did the procedure, was told the procedure would, could be painful, would definitely be uncomfortable. And in actual fact, it was more like having a massage because I was so relaxed that um, there was no resistance and uh, they were able to move him easily. Um, only problem being that as soon as they let go and um, he actually springed straight back to big breach, but never mind. <laughs> but the actual procedure was really lovely. And I think part of it was because of, I was just, I had my headphones in doing a guided relaxation. That is, that's wonderful. That's a really, that's a really great example of those times in our lives when that, you know, mindful meditation and guided meditations can be so helpful to release that tension and let, you know, let go of those preconceived notions of what this is going to be and just allow it to be what it is. Because when we, when we tense up more, um, the, the more resistance that we have, the more pain that we end up feeling. So that was, that was really a wonderful illustration of that. Thank you so much for sharing. So the next activity um, within this objective is to really describe and think about and talk about the things that we actively avoid um, and the pain and the suffering that it causes and be able to fluently and thoroughly discuss the things that are being avoided and what it has and what it has cost us in the long run. So the, the areas that we'll look at and that you'll be asked to do in, within the exercises is to think about the memories that you avoid, the bodily sensations that you avoid, the emotions that you avoid, the thoughts, and the urges. So for me, the memories that I have from my life that I, that I tend to avoid and tend to push away and push down are related to those times in my life when I have acted mindlessly and hurt others and when others have acted mindlessly, mindlessly and caused me to hurt. I, you know, there's a push pull um, relationship that I have with these memories because I want to avoid the pain that those memories evoke of just the physical and the emotional hurt as well as the hurt that it has caused over time and cost me in regard to 
um, the development of rather shallow relationships. So, you know, I, have, uh, I could name off a, you know, a list of people that I would consider close personal friends. But when I dive more deeply into the actual things that have been done and the, the words that have been said and, and the actions that have been taken, they are relatively shallow. And that causes me pain because I don't want them to be that. I want, I want to be able to talk about those things, those history of pain, the history of hurt, so we can move past them and um, get on with the, with the better business of living a more full life and connecting more deeply. The bodily sensations that I tend to avoid are um, the pain related to headaches. Don't get them as, as often as I used to, but in the past I've had a, a history of very intense headaches that would last for day, a day, if not more. I'd wake up in the morning with an intense headache um, and, um, and then it would last throughout the day no matter what I did. And sometimes, you know, I would try to use a strategy of going to sleep and hopefully wake up feeling better. But sometimes my headaches were so intense that I would wake up feeling the same as I did before. And part of the part of the reason and why I want to avoid this bodily sensation is that it's painful. And the other is um, related to the, um, the passing of my mom, because when she passed away, there was no indication that there was anything wrong. She simply woke up one morning, had a, had a severely intense headache, and by the end of the day was in a coma due to a brain aneurysm. And so because of that, and that, that, that traumatic experience in my early adulthood, I had a lot, I have a lot of fear, had a lot of fear about what my headaches meant for me. And so this caused me to do a couple of things early on. So soon after she passed and I was getting, getting these intense headaches, I feared that I was, I too might have a brain aneurysm. And so I requested um, diagnostic testing and further you know, brain scans to ensure that I, I was okay and my brain was okay. The other thing that I, that I tend to do is take a, probably a lot more um, pain medication than is necessary to deal with the headaches that I had, but because my headaches would be so intense and because they would last for so long, I, you know, I, I really got, I got to the point where I would take the very maximum, like if you were in a hospital, the dosage of you know Tylenol or ibuprofen that you know, believe that they would give you in order to take that pain away. And while you know while it would be effective at addressing the problem that I was having in the immediate term, the potential long-term cost of that is uh, negative and negative health impacts of those chemicals being placed placed in my body and the impact on, potential impact on my liver and other bodily functions. And not necessarily taking care of or being present in the moment to understand what other, what environmental factors were contributing to the occurrences of headaches. I was simply focused on making the pain go away as quickly as possible so I could get back to what it is that I wanted or needed to do. The emotions in my life that I have actively avoided is pleasure and happiness. So over, over the span of my years growing up, I was constantly in a state of attempting to get rid of pain. But as many of you likely know, when you, when you get in the habit of pushing away a feeling, get a feeling, push away, get a feeling, push it down. Your brain becomes less able to discriminate between emotions. And thus, and thus we end up 
pushing all feelings down. So pain, go away. Sadness, go away. Happiness, go away. And that is what the technical term for that is alexithymia. And so this created a, a state of being for me. And what it cost me was a disconnection from myself and my own joy and happiness. And truly, and then further than that, a disconnection from others in the social world. The thoughts that I tend to avoid are related to the difficult things that need to be done that I have you know, consistently put on the back burner. Put it on the back burner because it takes too much effort, too much money, too much time, too much, um, you know, too many difficult conversations to actually deal with the things that need to be done. And th what this has cost me in my life is that, you know, there are things in my life that I have perpetually put off, put off, put off. And, um, you know, important things have gone undone to the point where it has, you know, created some other problems in my life due to not being able to remain in the present moment and just deal with the things and do the things that needed to be done when they needed to be done, regardless of how much, how uncomfortable it was. And finally, when it comes to urges, the, the urges in my life that I have avoided most frequently are related to urges in regard to advocating for change when I am in a place where I'm either at risk of being hurt or actually being hurt, or when others are at risk of being hurt or actually being hurt. And so what this is what this has caused is a you know pain related and continuing continual suffering related to just acceptance of this status quo and allowing to to be allowing things to remain as they are, even though they are not ideal and even though they are causing problems. The long term cost of this for me personally and for a lot of people that I know is this, um, this sense of being an imposter. I'm not really who I say I am. If I was really who I said I was, then I would do the things that I, that, um, that I think are important. I would stand up. I would speak up, I would do the hard things. And so um, being, you know, being disconnected from those things, avoiding those confrontations and those critical conversations um, has, has really cost me in the long run because it has, you know, I have perceived that it, is, it has caused others to think negatively about me and who I really am and to embody this sense or this feeling of being an imposter.